Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Andrew's Church. Happy Valley Goose Bay. We are so honored to share our service with you today. And I pray that our, our worship is a blessing for you. Let us pause to collect ourselves as we worship the Lord. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. The presence of the light reminds us of Jesus' coming into our world and into our lives as we worship. And again, we are not allowed to sing in church or at our services, so I will play the tunes for the hymns today. And our first one is, Come Let Us Sing of a Wonderful Love. to worship give thanks to God who is good whose love lasts forever and ever we, we thank, thank you God, God for you are good and your love lasts forever and ever we thank you with songs of joy and tell all what you have done for us we thank you God for you are good, and your love lasts forever and ever. In our trouble we call to you, God, and you save us from our distress. We thank you, God, for you are good, and your love lasts forever and ever. And we'll say our opening prayer together. On this Sunday of joy, we pause to remember that even in cold and difficult times, such as this season of Lent, 
we are never alone. May we always remember, loving God, that you are with us to comfort, strengthen, and challenge us. Amen. And our prayer of confession and pardon. We are stubborn, O God. We want things our way or not at all. Forgive us. We are restless, O God. We demand instant solutions. Forgive us. We have fears, O God. Sometimes we let them overtake us. Forgive us. Fill us with your grace. Make us new and set us right. Amen. And our words of assurance. Hear the words of this simple truth proclaimed in Scripture. God loved the world so much. God sent Jesus, God's only Son, to be our Savior. That whoever believes in him might not perish but have everlasting life. Indeed, God did not send Jesus into the world to condemn the world, but so that the world might be saved through him. Know that no matter who you are or where you have been or what you have done, God loves you always. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now we'll have our first reading and song. From Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading of Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them, and saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell of his acts with shouts of joy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. reading is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, 
following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead to our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our next hymn is Fear Us, Lord Jesus. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, you Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those 
who do not believe are condemned already. But those, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. speak to you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wearing a mask in uh, indoor public spaces is something we've had to get used to during this uh, pandemic. But it's not always easy to recognize people when they're wearing their masks. I was at a convenience store the other day when I ran into a parishioner. He had his hat on and his nose and mouth were covered by his mask. I did not recognize him at first, and afterwards I apologized for not recognizing him. And our parishioner said to me, that's nothing. And apparently, he was in a store a few days before that. And the lady who served him said to him, you don't know me, do you? And my parishioner wanted to say, I didn't recognize you with your mask on. But what he actually did say to the woman was, Madam, I didn't recognize you with your clothes on. <laughs> My parishioner shall remain anonymous. <laughs> On Friday, March the 12th, there was a memorial service to remember the loss of 17 lives when Cougar Helicopter 491 went down 12 years ago on the way to the offshore oil fields, White Rose and Hibernia. It was a virtual service this year because of the pandemic, just like a, a similar service in February to mark the loss of 84 lives when the oil rig Ocean Ranger sank 39 years ago. What does our religion say to those personally affected by such tragedies as these? What does the Holy Bible say? Where do you begin to look for a Bible perspective on these tragic events? Well, I know of no better place to look than today's Gospel reading containing what is perhaps the best-known verse in the whole Bible. John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That verse has been said to summarize the entire New Testament. It tells us that God sending Jesus into the world was an act of love. God loves this world that much. John 3, 16 is a verse that tells us that this life is not all there is. There is eternal life to look forward to when this life is ended. For those who died when the ocean ranger sank, for those who died when the cougar helicopter went down, there is eternal life to look forward to. Which also means that their loved ones, those who were devastated by their loss, those loved ones can look forward to seeing them again. This life is not the end. There is new life and a heavenly reunion to look forward to. But doesn't John 3.16 also say that this promise of eternal life is reserved for those who believe? Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. How much belief do we need to have? How much belief is enough? On the one hand, Jesus is always reminding his disciples how little belief, how little faith they have. On the other hand, Jesus said, if you have faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, you can move a mountain. In Mark 9, a father brought his epileptic son to Jesus to be healed. The father was told 
that if he believed, the healing could happen. And the father, who desperately wanted his son to be healed, said, I believe, please help my unbelief. I have a little bit of faith, Jesus, please help me have more. And the Bible tells us that Jesus healed the man's son. For Jesus, just wanting to believe, wishing you could believe, is sufficient. But what if a person has never said, I want to believe? What if a person has never said, I wish I could believe? What if a person has never heard the good news of God's love in sending Jesus into the world? What if a person has heard the good news but said, no, I'm not interested? Three weeks ago, the second reading was from chapter 3 of the first letter of Peter. It spoke about the time of Noah, when almost everybody was disobeying God. Corruption and violence were everywhere. And God decided to destroy the world by means of a flood. Eight human beings were saved. All the rest, all those who had disobeyed God, died in the flood. But as our reading from 1 Peter told us, that was not the end of the story. After Jesus died on the cross, in his spirit, he went and preached to the very people who had disobeyed God in the time of Noah. These people had done a lot of sinful things. In their earthly lifetime, they had not repented of their sins. But in the life after death, according to St. Peter, they are being given a second chance. God's mercy, God's loving kindness are seen to reach even beyond the grave. God is truly the God of, of second chances, of third chances, of however many chances it takes for each person to understand this truth. God loves me, God loves you. Jesus died for me, Jesus died for you. God is a God of however many chances it takes for each person to say, I am sorry for the things I have done wrong in my life. Thank you for loving me and dying for me on the cross. Please come and be with me forever. Is there then anything that can separate a person from God's mercy, God's love? Is there anything that can separate a person from these? St. Paul gave a, a great deal of thought to that question. And the answer that St. Paul came up with is set forth in Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. I am convinced, Paul said, that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. next hymn, Lord, I lift your name on high. And it's one of my favorite hymns. I would love to be able to, uh, to sing this hymn today. But anyway, we will play it. And you can sing it at home. Sing your little hearts out.
now our children and youth ministry. One of my favorite Bible verses begins, For God so loved the world. I was thinking about that verse and wondering just how great God's love is and how we could measure it. Today I brought several things that we often use to measure stuff. I thought they might be helpful in measuring God's love. Sometimes we measure ingredients. If I were making some cookies, we would use a measuring cup for cookies. But I wonder if we might use a measuring cup to measure God's love. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. My cup runneth over. Well, if our cup runs over with God's love, I guess we couldn't use a measuring cup to measure it. If we were building something, we would use a tape measure. But I wonder if we might use a tape measure to measure God's love. The Bible tells us that God's love is higher than the heavens. If God's love is higher than the heavens, I don't think we could use a tape to measure it, could we? We use a watch to measure time. There will probably be some people here this morning or at your homes who will use their watches to measure how long Reverend Derek's sermon lasts. I wonder if we could use a watch to measure how long God's love will last. The Bible tells us that God's love is from everlasting to everlasting. Wow. If God's love is from everlasting to everlasting, I guess we couldn't measure it with a watch, could we? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. How do you measure love like that? We can't measure it. We don't need to measure it. But we do need to experience it. My prayer for you today is that you may understand how wide, how long, how high, and how deep God's love really is. May you experience it though it be so great that you will never fully understand it. And we say the prayer together. Dear God, God we, we thank you for your love, a love, a love so great that you gave your one and only Son so that we could have eternal life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let us pray together. God, we love you and we thank you for giving us so many gifts. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who lives inside us, the Spirit that gives us life. We thank you for the Church and for making us a part of it. Amen. God has blessed our lives with relationships, joy, inspiring, and challenging. In response to God's blessings in our lives, we are now invited to share our offering. And our next hymn, Thank You, Lord, for Loving Me.
we'll say the prayer over the gifts together. God of mercy and compassion, your word calls us home to faith and love. Accept all we offer you this day in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Your response to we pray to you, Lord, is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the church. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the church of the province, province of Chile, its bishops, clergy, and people. In the Tridiocesan cycle of prayer today, we pray for Cathedral Parish of St. John the Evangelist in Corner Brook. The Dean and Rector, Catherine Short. The Vicar, Coro Lynn Bray. The Honorary Assistant, Stuart Payne and Duncan Granter. We pray for hospital chaplains. We pray for Edward Keeping, David Pilling, Osliff Shepherd, Christopher Fowler at St. Luke's Home in St. John's. Pray for David Russell, Terry Loader in Cornerbrook. Joan Antle in Grand Falls, Windsor, Sheila Xavier in Clarenville, that we may continue to grow in our relationship with Christ and manifest God's unbounded love for the human family for our deeds of light. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of transformation, that God will lead us from the comfort of darkness and selfishness and enable us to live in freedom as children of the light. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater realization of God's goodness, that we may recognize everything as a gift from God and open our hearts to accept the additional gifts that God has for us. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the gift of hope, that we may not despair as we encounter violence, greed, and abuse, but by the Holy Spirit courageously give witness to God's mercy and compassion. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a just and equitable distribution of the coronavirus vaccine, that God will give insight to those distributing and administering the vaccine so that those who are the most vulnerable may be vaccinated. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask God's blessing and healing on all who are in need of prayer this day. We continue our prayers for Joe Trimlett, Mabel Russell, Janet Ward, Kim Simmons, Louis Chop, Fran Cole, Aidan O'Keefe, Leona Alley, Olive Pottle, Tom Caldwell, and George Cabot, and anyone you would like to name aloud or in the silence of your heart. that God will relieve their pain, restore their health, and, and protect the human family from the further spread of the COVID virus. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. And we pray for all who have died. We pray for the family and friends of Shirley Gillette, Joseph Best, Juliana Anton, and Mark Hopkins. That Christ will welcome them into eternal joy and give peace to all who grieve their death. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord hear our God. prayer. We'll now take this time to offer up our own private prayer. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us go from this place in the strength of God's mercy to live and serve in newness of life. We are, we are sent in Christ's name. And may God bless our Lenten journeys. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. And our church notices this week. I want to thank all parishioners for your financial support for during this time of COVID-19. And for parishioners inquiring about how to get your weekly givings to us, you can send your weekly church envelopes or post data checks to St. Andrew's Church, P.O. Box 130, Station B. Or an easy way to help your church is by electronic givings, which is available here. And uh, if you need more information, please contact me. Or you can EMT your givings to Parish of Lake Melville at gmail.com and thank you so much for your financial support next sunday march 21st at 11 a.m please join us there at st andrew's church for our pre-taped service and thank you all for worshiping with us today and thank you all for your wonderful positive comments each week at our service and thank you from for all those who are watching from near and far. Our last hymn, To God Be the Glory. <laughs> 